We take a live look tonight at the valley and the Sierra. All of us bracing for drenching rains, strong winds, and heavy snow again. We've got team coverage tonight. Our Alicia Machado tracking down the latest on storm damage and power outages. But we'll begin with Chief Meteorologist Monica Wood. She joins us now, and you are tracking the storm as it rolls in tonight, Monica. We can hear it coming down right now, and as you mentioned, we have that uh, flood warning in effect from parts of the Cosumnes River right around Wilton, Rancho Murrieta, with continued rises on that river. And here's the reason why. You can see the amount of rain coming in right now. This is the big band starting to push on shore, but there's so much more of this to come. This is just the beginning of what we're going to be dealing with all night long with wind and rain. Right now the winds are fairly uh, calm in some areas, but they are starting to pick up at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Again, just the beginning. In about an hour, we'll really start to hear those howling through the valley. High wind warning in effect until tomorrow afternoon with wind gusts up to 45 to 65 miles per hour. And this is all going to be hitting on the heels of all that damage we're still cleaning up from. So many people still without power. More possible tonight through early tomorrow. Here's the winds at 1 a.m. starting to funnel right through the valley. They will increase by about 4 o'clock. We're looking at wind gusts closer to about 45 to almost 50 miles per hour, hitting their peak right around 6 to 6.30. Elk Grove expecting a peak wind gust closer to about 50 to 55 miles per hour. We'll finally start to see some of that part of the storm winding down by the afternoon, but the rain will continue. And so we will find not only uh, rises on creeks and streams, but local uh, street flooding as well as power outages possible throughout the valley, the foothills and the Sierra. The Sierra possibly seeing wind gusts over 100 miles per hour. So if you have an opportunity right now while you still have power, charge those phones and devices, get those important documents ready. If you're in some of those flood areas, also a to go bag and remember the pets as well, because this is going to be a relentless storm for tonight through early tomorrow. With uh, the winds, we are also going to see in sequence the heaviest rain coming through tonight through early tomorrow and rain in parts of the Sierra. So we're not only dealing with rainfall, but runoff with a flood watch through Wednesday. Luke, we've just begun. More on this storm and more to come in just a bit. Yes, Monica, some scary hours ahead of us. What the f this is how things looked on Sacramento Avenue in West Sacramento last night as lines sparked and popped. Hundreds of thousands of people plunged into the dark overnight, some still waiting for the power to return. PG&E still working to restore power from last night's storm as well as the uh, as well as the New Year's weekend storm. You can also see thousands of customers waiting for the lights to come back on and more than 300,000 smud customers lost power last night. Crews have been working all day and night to restore power. 52,000 people still in the dark and ABC 10's Alicia Machado joining us now live from Sacramento with more on the repairs and the damage done. What are you seeing right now, Alicia? The rain has already started, but the worst of the storm still left to come. Smud says the last storm caused extensive damage throughout their areas, knocking down power poles and bringing down trees, damaging some of the lines. Smud crews are working to repair damages before the storm gets worse. It's not often you'd see a street light on the ground, but that's exactly what neighbors on 21st Avenue in South Sacramento woke up to Sunday morning. Some with large trees uprooted by the storm in their driveways. I hope everybody is okay. Neighbor Anna Kennedy lives nearby in Sacramento's Tahoe Park area and recalls how powerful Saturday night's storm was. There's a whole lot of wind. We actually moved into the family room because we've got a pretty big tree uh, right over our bedroom. The wind leaving this this behind all around the area. Trees even fell onto homes on 22nd Avenue. Crews cutting down branches to clear the mess as another storm system heads our way, expected to bring more of the same. I feel very fortunate that the big trees around my property are fine, uh, and I just feel bad for all the people that their property can't say the same. Utility crews working into the night to restore power on 21st Avenue after neighbors say trees brought down lines. The storm knocked out power for thousands of customers in the Lemon Hill area. 
High winds enough to snap the top of this power pole and take down lines, dropping power poles like dominoes with them. Power went out about 11.30 last night. Outside, power poles toppled over, some still hanging in the aftermath of the storm Sunday. It's uh, eye-opening, <laughs> and not only here, but like I said, I've been, I've been all the way downtown, uh, Mac Road, and it's, it's all over. This, this is not just me. Uh, it's, it's happening. Neighbor Romelio Du Bois prepared to spend the evening under candlelight and others bringing in flashlights and ice to chill food. Smud says they expect many people to lose power again as more wind and rain hit the Sacramento area. Their infrastructure faced extensive damage throughout their service territory. A spokesperson says they ordered extra materials and crews to get as many people power as possible. Now to give you some perspective, SMUD tells us that the New Year's Eve storm brought down 130 power poles. Last night's storm brought down more than 80, and this storm coming up is expected to do more of the same. SMUD is working hard to restore power, but they do tell us that flooding and any other storm damage can delay their response. All right, Alicia, yeah, it's going to take them some time to restore power to every neighborhood in our area. Thank you for that report. The Wilton community in South Sacramento County now under an evacuation order with these new rounds of intense storms. The Consumnes River will exceed flood stage, making evacuation routes impassable. Some are already taking shelter. Scary because the wind was like literally picking up the side of the car and it was rocking it and picking it up and moving it. One of those people, Kimberly Gum, who lives in her car, that experience led her to the evacuation center at the Sacramento Asian Sports Foundation in Elk Grove. The area still taking in people from surrounding areas, including Wilton. People that evacuate, excuse me, are under extreme stress. And so there's a psychological aspect of getting out of the shelter and getting someplace safe as well. Again, evacuations underway in South Sacramento County. Those around the Wilton area have been ordered to leave again over flooding concerns. There is now an evacuation warning in effect in El Dorado County due to possible flooding. Take a look now if you're in the area of Highway 50 in Whitehall or Highway 49 in Union Mine Road to the Amador El Dorado County border. Be prepared to evacuate. This is a warning right now, but it could become an evacuation order. And if you need more time to evacuate, you should consider leaving now. And this from the Sutter County Sheriff tonight, an evacuation warning has been issued to the residents of the commercial trailer Park Lovey's Landing on the river side of the Sacramento River Levee. This is in northwestern Sutter County, and the warning is in effect immediately. We're also tracking school closures. We've confirmed earlier the uh, closure of Sacramento City Unified Schools also tonight. We learned that Stockton Unified School District will cancel all classes tomorrow due to the extreme weather. Same for Galt Joint Union High School District. Uh, Elk Grove Unified has shut down C.W. Dillard Elementary and Cosumnes River Elementary Schools. They plan to open all other campuses tomorrow. And we'll have a list of school districts and their plans right now at ABC10.com. New tonight at 11, new details in a deadly storm related accident this weekend. A tree fell on a woman last night and killed her. The woman was on the levee by North 5th Street, close to the American River when the tree fell. Joe Costa says he tried to save her. My tree, tree part of my house there, it snapped off and, and landed on my neighbor's tent. And uh, I immediately went running down there and looked around for her and I started yelling for 911. And uh, the tree was laying on her, so I busted a limb off and, and uh, cut open the side of the tent and pulled her out. And uh, uh, she was unresponsive and, and her breathing was barely there. Mm. The woman was taken to the hospital where she sadly died. If you don't already have the ABC 10 app, now is the time to download it. The app is free and it will send you alerts on important weather updates for your area.